What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews. You name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku. As well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. On the boss man show, friend of the show. I go send off there. He's been on the show when he was Tennessee. He's been on the show when he's in Missouri, in California. Now he's back in Missouri State. The man himself is Conzo Martin. Coach Martin, to talk to you again. How's life up there in the good city of Springfield, good brother? No, it's great, man. Thank you for having me. I'm just enjoying life and I got my workout in today, so I'm good to go. Now, Coach Martin, for you, man, uh, this opportunity in Missouri State, you've been there previously, so, so I know when it opened up, it, it probably caught your attention a, a lot, man. Were you expecting to jump back in this cycle or this, 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 this job was so, so special to you? You said, hey, I, well, I, I got to jump at this. I just think really, you know, having two years out to to, to really reflect, rejuvenate, uh, and, and more more than anything, to be rejoiced, uh, to have the opportunity to do that, to be with my family, to spend, spend quality time. Because oftentimes in what we do in this profession, we, we're – we could be present uh, in family situations, but not present, you know, because you got the cell phones, you got so much stuff going on. So you consume with everything and building your program, maintaining success and, and, and dealing with your student athletes. But that time off was great for me. So now when this opportunity came around, I just feel like it was a great one. One, because I've been here before. I'm familiar with the people. I'm familiar with the landscape. Uh, it's in proximity to where I was born and raised uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, but I grew up on the east side in Illinois. So I just thought everything lined up properly. I, I had a great relationship with the athletic director who just, you know, took another job. So, but I've been through that before too, man. But it just, again, it's just a part of the business, and I'm happy to be back here. No doubt, Coach Martin. For you, while you was out, Coach Martin, how much basketball did you watch to try to maybe learn some more basketball? Look at some European ball. Look at the NBA. Kind of pick up some schemes here that you may want to implement now this time around. Because I know when you're out of the game, you have time to th- think about the game or look at the game, evaluate with the game. So, how did you kind of do that b- basketball wise? Good question. Well, you know, when you're in it, uh, you know, I watch a lot of film. You know, I, I would watch, say, for example, we play a team on Tuesday. In the prep prep for the game on Saturday, I probably watched at least three pieces of game film outside of uh, clips of individual players. So I watched a lot of film. In the summertime, 
you know, in the spring and summertime, you try to watch some NBA teams, and international teams as much as you can, but you, but you not really consumed with it because your focus is your team. You, you want to grow. You go to, you go to camps and clinics. You stay a lot of different things, but not at the level you would like. So having the time out to really watch a, a, a lot of NBA games to study games. And I didn't watch every team. So if I watched a game, I watched for entertainment, but there's probably four or five teams that I watched to study because they, they they resembled, you know, college teams and how they played, how they shared the ball, how they moved the ball, their structure, the team, how they defended and their transition offense to flow. Even though they had star players, they played like a college atmosphere, not so much one on one play. So I studied that. And then I talked to quite a few guys that would whether with G League teams or NBA teams and studying. And I and I watched college basketball just from an entertainment standpoint, but more teams that I wanted to watch and study. And they they could have been mid-major programs, high major, uh, low major. So it didn't matter just how they played the game and, and try to implement some of the things there. Yeah, so watched a lot of ball, but it was at my pace. And I would, some days I would go three straight hours. I mean, I'd go two days not watching all. So just, I just was constantly taking notes and preparing myself to be better just in case. Now, Coach Martin, you're better than me, man. I can't watch for entertainment. My mind's going to... What, 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 what defense we in? Are we hedging? We, we're blitzing? What, 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 what action we're running? I can't watch the game as a fan, Coach. My body goes to strategy every time, man. Now, but, uh, boss, I'd say, so the entertainment piece were more or less teams that I have relationships with. Yes. So it could have been a head coach or an assistant coach. So I watch from that standpoint. I go see their teams play. Or when I did some consulting for teams and programs, I would watch those teams. But I'm just I'm just not turning the TV on, just watching. Now, I will say this. Out, out of all the conferences around the country. The, the, the league that I watched the most for whatever reason was the Big East. I, I enjoyed the Big East play because I thought it was it was old school physical from a Big Ten standpoint back in those days when I played. I thought the refs, I mean, I'm talking about they, they let those guys play. I thought that all of them, for the most part, played hard. They played tough. They defended. They rebounded. It was a physical brand, man. So I enjoyed watching Big East basketball. No doubt, Coach. You know what I love about the finals right now is watching my old buddy Al Horford, even Xavier Tillman, they're surviving the switch. When we go, we switch switching one through five. They have a five minute they can survive that switch, man. And watching my two guys I know, I know very well, Xavier Tillman and Al Horford, survive those switches, man, with Luca down to the Kyrie Irving, man. So impressive of bigs and move their feet and survive. Yeah, actually, not, actually can test the shot the right way and maybe from, force them to do a fade away or not the shot they, shot they want. It's beautiful for the watch, Coach. Man, I, I think when you're talking about those two teams, and I'm, I'm going to go Boston specifically, they have a togetherness and they're built to win. And and when you, anytime you have an all-league guy like Al Horford who's committed to whatever it takes to win basketball games, whether you bring him in the starter or come off the bench, however you want to do it, he's accepted that role. And, and a guy of that magnitude has embraced that role. Then you have a Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, two talented guys, man. But if you're able to switch with big guys on those skill players, man, it's just – it just goes to show you the willingness to win and do whatever it takes to win basketball games. You got and you got to become selfless and you got to embrace whatever role in order for our team to be successful. And I think both teams exemplify that. But when you're talking about those two big guys specifically, it's phenomenal to watch. It's good to watch guys who can who can either defend up or defend down that that down position and still be effective. And I think that's what young men in your program should want to strive to be. I can guard up or down my position and survive switches and be switchable on anything, flexible, so you can play them multiple, multiple minutes because they, they can do multiple, multiple things for you. So I think these two, two, two teams are good for your teams doing workouts to show, like, hey, you want to play a lot and you do it's effective. Watch these guys right here. Well, I think when you're talking the game, when you're talking terms of teams that are built to win championships, and these two teams are right that they, one, they have the togetherness. I think the other part you, you have to have is a competitive spirit. And I think oh, yes. somebody has to win the games. So, and I think somewhere that's that's lost in, in, in the youth game, not to, not to say anybody lacks talent, nobody's not coaching it. When you play a lot of games and, and, and you win a lot of games, you play in a whole weekend, you, you take for granted what it means to actually win the game. And then what it means, I think we have to be better as coaches. And you see these two teams, what it means to play hard. And, and I don't want to bring bring up any names in these championship games, but some guys don't play hard. They don't play hard. I don't care what the level stats, how much money you make, but they don't play hard consistently. Yes, and it sir. shows sometimes. And I think the leadership piece, and I, and I think both teams exude leadership. And, and 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 we can be we can be great leaders whether we're vocal or communicate behind the scenes. You can do that. Then you you have to have the emotional intelligence, man. In these type of atmospheres, the hostile environments, you can't get co so consumed with how the game is being officiated. You got to play the game, and the skill is skill. And you look you look at when you're talking about. 
Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Luca, Kyrie Irving. You talking about some of the, the best talents in the world? I mean, right now you're talking. We, if you say top fifteen guys in the world, that's four of them right there. Oh yes, no doubt, Coach Marty. For you, man, like Coach Marty, you've had a knack for building programs the right way, getting guys to play the right way. Talk about that piece about yourself coming to a new program, set, setting the standard, setting the culture, getting guys to buy in and be together and get them to want to play the right way for, for their brother and be connected on the on and off the court and, and follow the game and discipline the right way and just do things right all the time. Well, well I think one, uh, there has to be a level of commitment and sacrifice. And and, and I'll I, I go back to many times, every, everybody says the word sacrifice. And we know the definition of sacrifice. But I'll often say if, if, if you've never – felt a great loss or giving up anything at it. from a great standpoint that you've never really sacrificed anything. And I think in order to become a great team, there has to be a level of sacrifice because everybody, you know, coming to this level, you played somewhere, everybody's good at this level. So, so what do I need to do to be successful within this team? And I try to get that to guys understand that. And I, I show it in a lot of different ways, the commitment, the accountability, just the sacrifice of being on time every day. Can you consistently be on time every day? But also, I try to instill in these guys, are you blessed with this opportunity? Because oftentimes we take things for granted. Are you blessed with this opportunity? And I'll give you an example. I went, I went, um, and I try to train with our guys, our players. Now, again, I can't train at that level, so I'm not saying that. But a couple of our guys, they went, uh, one of our players and one of our student managers, we went to, uh, I mean, graduate assistant, we went around the state football stadium stairs this morning. And again, I'm not doing it at the level they are, but as we were walking over there, it's, it's 85 degrees of sun shining, beautiful campus, you got trees and lights. Uh, the sun, everything. So I said to the guys, I said, as we were walking, I said, do you realize, man, that there are guys that are in prison right now. They'll never be able to wait, make this walk the rest of their lives. They will put them in a casket and they'll never be able to make this walk. I said, so to be able to enjoy this walk and the sun is shining, you can see the campus, you can hear the birds, construction going on campus, which is a great thing. So be blessed for this opportunity. Don't take this for granted. And I said, but I also say to him, at some point, you will become a pillar in your community. So what does that mean? Will you be a great man, husband, father, teacher, and leader? Mm-hmm. All you're doing, if you all you consume with is just a basketball game, then, man, you will shove yourself in life. I mean, so you want more out of life. So, man, strive to be more. So I instill all those things, really. So when we get to the court, they understand the impact. So if you're an NBA player, great. But if not, that doesn't mean your life is ended. You just get started. And so that's what we try to talk about more than anything, the accountability of what it means to be a man and be successful student athlete and doing things the right way and working as hard as you can work and just let the chips fall where they may. And Coach Moore, you said you said a word there, but that's something my dad always told me. He said, you know, you didn't go pro, son. Your radio shows impact impacting people still. And, yes. And, yes. and my dad put that in my head some years ago because I was down for a while. I'm mm. doing radio because I wanted to just to stay around the game, right? Because I, I really wanted to play. But – you know, it didn't work out for me, right? But my dad said, I'm saying something, son, son. When you have coaches on your show, players on your show, you're impacting them and their families and other people who hear their story. So when my dad put that put that on me, coach, it changed my vision about this show where I'm doing it to impact others. And people hear you say today, Coach Martin, they'll hear that and somebody, it'll hit somebody. Which yes. I'm trying to say, one, two, three, four, five, you hit somebody, we yes. made a difference today on this show. I agree. I agree with that. And, and, and it just, you know, really uh, – I, I, in my time, I, there's a lot of learning, which is beautiful learning. And and what I try to say to our young men, you have to have the confidence to speak in a room of a thousand. And and because what happens, and I always say to them, the minute you wake up and you walk out your door, whether it's your dorm or apartment, you're walking billboard. And what does it read? Just like you see those billboards on the highway, they reading you every day. So it's how you move. And, and, and you hear the quotes and sayings all the time, how you do anything is how you do everything. For the most part, that is correct. And I just think for us, and I tell these guys, society will always judge you. Society will always judge you. So why don't you show them what a kingdom man looks like? Show them what integrity and character looks like. Show them what accountability looks like. But also show them a man when storms hit. You deal with the storms, you embrace the storms. And you navigate through them. That's part of life. Everybody, every every story is not always successful, start to finish. We all go through something in life, and it's just how we handle it. Now, and you got to be, you got to wear pain, you got to wear uh, disappointment, and you got to wear uh, hard times with a smile. And I try to do it the best of my abilities. And Coach Morgan, for you, man, uh, is this summertime, man? Being year one workouts, is it more? team oriented things or more player development because I know you want to put stuff in but so how, how do you kind of balance the final line with these four hours you have every week 
Oh, we 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 do it all. We just so so what we do first two weeks is a it's a lot of getting to know each other. So we work out. So what we do is uh in our first two weeks, we go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday on the floor, about 40 minutes somewhere around. And then we do uh, four days a week in the weight room. But on the floor, we try to mix it up half and half. Half the guys in the weight room, half on the court, then we flip-flop them. And it's really a lot of skill development because in, in my mind, every, it doesn't matter if you're 5'10 on the team or 6'10. Six, six, we, we try to treat dribbling, passing, and shooting, uh, ball handling, passing to the left hand, passing the right hand, bounce back, all the fundamentals that we used to be taught for years. So we do a lot, and I've always done that. So with a lot of fundamental, a lot of skill work, not so much as up and down. I'm not trying to check your condition in, in the first two weeks because you should be in peak performance this time of year anyway. So we'll grow into that. So now this is week three. So in week three, we'll start implementing more team things on both sides of the basketball. And we have seven weeks uh, here at school because normally NCAA gives you eight weeks, but we'll have seven here because we give we give about five days off during the fourth of July to get home, be with your family, have a good time. Now again, in my previous years, I wouldn't have done that just thinking you got to work, 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 work. But you also have to understand the balance of family and the importance of family. So I encourage them to get home with their families and and and, and to enjoy all of that because I think it's very important. No doubt. Coach Martin, let me ask you this, man. Since you said you're getting back into it, it's now changing with NIL and the portal, which I call kind of speed dating now. <laughs> so how do you go about vetting the young man and so fast, kind of know he was about the right things, about the right values that you want to have in a program, that he's about the team and not just me or want, want a little bit of change in his pocket? Well, I, I love these times. First and foremost, I love to see young men and women to, to be able to gain financial wealth and financial security. Now, everybody, everybody's numbers are different, but I love that part. The The one thing, when, when it first came, I was, I was on the NCAA oversight committee amongst other people. So about five years ago, when they first started talking about it, 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 was, it was transfer portal, one-time transfer. Then it was name, image, and likeness. We didn't think they were coming out at the same time, but all of a sudden they both hit like, boom, like a grenade just hit. And I don't think any of us were prepared to deal with it. And we're still working toward dealing with it. I mean, we're still learning as we go today. But to see student athletes get get money, I think that's great. Uh, I, I wish there were better ways that we can get money, meaning, like, for, say, say, for example, every student athlete get 500000 to a million, whatever, whatever price your name, great, get it. But I wish there was a way, if you stay at that school for four years, then there's a there's a bonus of, you know, if you're power five, there's a bonus of $500,000 check if you graduate from that school. You finish in four years. Uh, and and if you transfer somewhere, you still get the same thing. But if you stay there all four years, that five hundred thousand dollar bonus check. But if you graduate from any school, say there's a two hundred fifty thousand dollar bonus check because you really work it towards something. It's hard to do. I think a lot of times the the the, the average fan. What I mean, average not shortchanging the fan. So I don't want to say average like that, but I mean fan that doesn't play the sport. I don't know if they realize the student athletes go to the same classrooms that the regular students go to. Correct. So can you imagine four plus hours a day working on your skill, really pretty much year round working on the skill and your craft to get better. That's four plus hours within the team. Now we both know in order to be great, there got to be two extra hours on your own to get mm-hmm. skilled. So that's all year round for four years to be great. And I still have to go to class and be a successful student athlete. Man, you really work on a job. So I said years ago, I said, why don't we give student athletes three credit hours every semester? For playing a sport because I should be able to have an educational degree when I finish playing the sport because this is my craft. I can go teach. I can be a gym teacher at least in this craft. I shouldn't have to go when I'm done playing, now I go get an educational certificate. This is my education. So I think we we have to rethink things from an educational standpoint at the university and say, man, what's really the impact of getting this degree when you play a sport? Because this is my job. I can teach this now. Not many can teach it. I'm certified to teach it. I've done it four plus years. So I think, man, I'm happy to get money. I just think that we have I, – I, I do struggle with, with with young men and women having an opportunity to transfer every year. Not because that's not their right. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking in terms of when I came out of East St. Louis as a young man, when I went to play for Gene Cady, who was a tough, hard-nosed coach. Everybody say tough, hard-nosed, but he wasn't. He was a, really a teddy bear, a great mind. My, my high school coach was tough, not hard-nosed, but laid back. So I, I'm, I wasn't sure when people meant tough, hard-nosed, what that meant, because I grew up around toughness, accountability, and all those things. But if I would have left Coach Cady after the first year, when I wasn't playing the first 10 games and transferred, and then went somewhere else and transferred, where do I grow? So every time the oh. rain hits, every time it started storming, I started running. I never had an umbrella to embrace it. Take the rain and keep going. Now, again, 
this is the culture we live in. So what I'm saying, kids aren't afraid and scared because they trans. So I'm not saying I don't want anybody. Oh, well, yeah, no, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, man, if the situation there is good, you're growing and getting better. Why go somewhere else? Because what we don't talk about the transfer portal, the thousands of young men and women that are left out because they decide to transfer. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we remove them and they have no options. So we're not talking about that piece. So I think we have to be better because as parents all around the country, parents, coaches, the NCAA, we need to sit down and say, okay, I don't have you one-time tramps. That's not what I'm complaining about, meaning me, Collins of Martin. But I'm saying for that young man that grew up in East St. Louis, that was me at 18 years old that left to Purdue – if I were to transfer out, because it was hard for me to coach, I would coach Katie in my first year, and I wasn't playing a lot that first semester. No telling where I would be right now. But because I stayed the course and stayed in the fight, it's one of the reasons why I sit here today. No doubt, Coach Moore. You said a word there, but like for me, like I had the opportunity to leave after my junior year. I was back in 07, 08, but I chose to stay where I was at. Because the grass and all my dad said, grass and I always green, greener, son. You've been there three years. You're going to senior year. You don't need to leave. And That's so true. I stayed right where I was. I think if I had a father like I had to guide me mm-hmm. and somebody I could always depend on and trust, come on, Father's Day here. My dad always uh, led me in the right direction. I can give him that much credit. He always tell, gave me the right worry what to do when something came, popped up in my life. Hey, man, I, I just think what happens with all of our young men and women, again, you have great opportunities, embrace those opportunities, but just think before you make some of these decisions because, and don't be consumed without. My goal is the NBA player on the women's side, WNBA player. I'm not sure if that's their goal, so I don't want to be disrespectful to their space. But you got to embrace your uniqueness, and I think that's the most important thing. And what I realized, God blessed me with gifts, blessed me with my own gifts, and they were designed exclusively for me. So I had to focus on how to pursue my gifts, and I got to be consistent with that in my work ethic, and I had to foster good habits in my lifestyle. I got to continue to learn how to love and love differently because sometimes what we struggle with as young men, when we go away from home, we learn a different form of love, which is that hard discipline. And we got to realize this this is another form of love. It's just from somebody else. It comes from some kind. Sometimes for young men, it's the first time a firmness of a man that they experience that 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 discipline, that love. And then you got to continue to take care of your body. You got to you got to be willing to learn and grow. That's the beautiful thing about life. I love growing at 52. I still like learning and growing. And then you got to be at peace with who you are. You can't be consumed with this guy. He he makes a hundred million dollars. This guy got this much in there. Man, be at peace with who you are because there's gifts for you and there's success for you. And then find joy and all that. Then ultimately, like I tell our guys, and I learned this older, not younger. Happiness has to come from within. And like I said, I don't take for granted just walking out there, seeing the trees and the sun shine. That's my happiness. And I thank God every morning I wake up. No doubt. Last one for you, Coach Martin. This man, uh, exciting for me that you all even go to Conference USA with Kennesaw State, Middle Tennessee, and uh, Western Kentucky. One more year, one more year in the Missouri Valley. Tell me about the outside of you for that move uh, uh, in 2025, July 1st, and enjoying it last year in the Valley. Well, I'm excited to enjoy this last year in the Valley, which is a great league, and that's where I got my start. And a, a lot of valuable lessons. <clears throat> Uh, a lot of wonderful experience. I'm, I'm I'm excited to finish the last year in the Valley, and I'm excited to move forward to the Conference USA, which is a great team there, too. And then change, sometimes change is good. I'm looking forward to that change. But right now, we're going to fight to try to win this Missouri Valley Conference Championship first. No doubt. But Coach, I'll see you probably at Belmont. Rick knows I always come to Belmont, at least. And I'll probably see you at Evansville, too, as well. So I'll definitely be cheering for you, man, because uh, you always been good to me in the show, Coach Martin. So I, I'm always in your corner, brother. Boss man, thank you, man. Have a great day. Thank you, Coach. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z, sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or... Check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Better Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play 
right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your Radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host JR Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.